Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece with Central New Mexico Community College. This is our third chapter that is still part of the cardiovascular system. This time we're going to focus on blood vessels. And in video A of a long series of videos, we're going to focus on the blood vessel wall histology. We can organize all of the blood vessels in our body into three different systems. That is the arterial system, then we have our capillaries, and finally our venous system. And if we draw um, their relationship, then arising from the heart, if we just sketch this real quick, arising from the heart, that's where we have our uh, arteries. Our arteries will then eventually, as they branch, 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 eventually they'll become arterioles. These arterioles, in turn, will further branch into capillary beds, which I'll just draw as such. It's at the level of the capillary beds that our tissues are supplied with oxygen and nutrients, and the capillaries also uh, collect wastes as well as carbon dioxide. From all of these capillaries, we're going to see that the blood is collected then by small little veins we call venules. And then these venules are going to merge with the much bigger veins, which are then going to return the blood back to the heart. More specifically, to the two major veins that return blood to the heart, of course, are the superior and inferior vena cava. So because we have these different types of blood vessels in the body, they're also going to express some histological differences. But before we can look at the differences, we need to first go over the general histology of a blood vessel wall. And we're going to acro come across three major layers. We're going to see a layer that is the innermost layer called the tunica intima or the tunica interna, tunic always referring to uh, layer, tunica media, the middle layer, and then the outer layer or tunica externa, also called tunica adventitia. Let's take a look at a picture to better understand this. So let's take a look at the picture here on your right, which is a picture of a decent sized blood vessel. So therefore we see all three layers in the capillaries. We're not going to see all these three layers or in the very small arterioles. So in the beige here, we see the tunica intima or the tunica interna, which is mostly made up of endothelium. You might recall that the endothelium is found in all blood vessels, actually, big and small, all the way down to the level of the capillaries. And it's made up of simple squamous epithelium. The simple squamous epithelium um, ensures that we have a nice, smooth, slick layer along which the blood can flow. Clearly, if there's any kind of damage to this endothelium or if it's bulging out, maybe due to um, atherosclerosis, um, the chances of formed elements, particularly platelets, getting stuck are high. And um, that, of course, can lead to the formation of a clot eventually. Finally, don't forget that the endothelium is continuous with the endocardium. Remember, the endocardium is the innermost layer of the heart. It lines the heart. Now, in the bigger vessels, we may even see a subendothelial layer, which is the basement membrane, basically, with a bit of loose connective tissue that, of course, can help nourish our avascular simple squamous epithelial tissue. The middle layer of most blood vessels is made up of smooth muscle and elastic fibers, and it's called the tunica media, literally meaning the middle layer. The smooth muscle, along with the, fi the elastic fibers, are going to allow for the vessel to become bigger in diameter and smaller in diameter. Of course, we refer to that as vasodilation, vaso always meaning vessel, and vasoconstriction. These are two muscle actions that are going to be a very going to play a very crucial role in the regulation of blood pressure and, and in how well the blood flows through the body. Finally, the external layer, we, which we call the tunica externa, or sometimes we call it the tunica adventitia. Be sure you know all these synonyms. 
is going to mostly be made up of um, collagen fibers, so it's more of a connective fibers, connective tissue layer. And of course, it's going to uh, help protect and anchor the blood vessels uh, to the surroundings. Now, within this layer, particularly if it's a pretty thick layer, we're going to see that there are nerve fibers, lymphatic vessels, and even blood vessels present. So here we're having blood vessels present within a blood vessel wall because all these tissues need to be nourished. So these vessels within the wall, the vessels within this particular layer, we call the vasa vasorum, which literally stands for vessels within vessels. So now that we have a good understanding of the three major tunics that we find in most blood vessels, the bigger blood vessels that is, we can make our comparison between the arteries and the veins. So on your left side we have a typical view of an artery, while on the, the right side we see a typical vein. And right off the bat what you should see is that the thickness of some of the layers differs between these two vessels. Arteries typically have a well-developed and thick tunica media, very characteristic. Most arteries are going to be functioning primarily in vasoconstriction and vasodilation. We see a much thinner tunica media in the veins, but what we do see as a thicker layer in the veins is the tunica externa or the tunica adventitia. So the thickest layer in the veins is the tunica externa, the thickest layer in the arteries is typically the tunica media. Now in, in some of our arteries, we're also going to see some additional elastic fibers, fibers that are not just distributed throughout that smooth muscle layer. And so we have an internal elastic and an external, external elastic uh, layer or membrane, they call it here. You can see that very often on slides, the internal layer in particular as this squiggly line almost very close to the endothelium. By the way, earlier I introduced you to the term the vasa vasorum, which we see uh, particularly in the tunica adventitia, but we may even see nerve vessels and they're referred to as the nervi vasorum, so nerve vessels in the tunica externa. So these are some major differences between arteries and veins. We're not going to see much of any elastic fibers in the veins. When you look at a microscope slide of an artery and vein, it's very easy to distinguish them. For one, arteries are going to have the roundest lumen with the veins having a rather collapsed lumen because the walls of veins are usually much thinner. In other words, if we compare the artery and the vein um, that are sitting close together. So we would be comparing perhaps the radial artery and the radial vein, which are comparable vessels. Notice the artery has a nice thick uh, tunica media and you can actually see that squiggly line I mentioned here earlier, um, which is that internal elastic layer. On the other hand, in the case of the veins, we have a very thick tunica adventitia or tunica externa. And so this table summarizes some of the things we've already discussed uh, with some more features that allow us to compare and contrast arteries and veins. Don't forget your definitions for arteries and veins. Remember that arteries always carry the blood away from the heart. Uh, veins bring it back to the heart and we cannot just depend on the oxygen concentration levels in arteries versus veins. We are going to see that some arteries, for instance, the pulmonary arteries are actually oxygen poor. Um, the pressure in our arteries is typically going to be higher or should be higher than the pressure in the veins because blood is always going to follow a pressure gradient. Finally, one of the things that wasn't mentioned yet in my discussion with of the pictures earlier, we're never going to see any kinds of valves inside of the arteries, but we do see quite a few valves in our veins, particularly in the, in the veins of uh, the extremities, that is our limbs, as well as the veins that sit below the heart.